last week we started a series called Movement. And we said that a movement is a group of people working together to a common goal. The movement that we're a part of here at church is the one that follows Jesus and wants to show others his love. Now, that's a pretty major movement, right? I think it's, it's one that has the potential to change the world. And maybe you've heard someone say that you can change the world. If you haven't heard that, let me be the first to tell you, I believe it's true. I think this is a room full of world changers. So maybe we hear that and we, we get really pumped up about that, right? It's exciting for us to think about being part of a movement that could change the world. Sign us up, right? Or maybe we hear that and we don't think much of it at all. After all, it's sort of one of those things that people say a lot. Uh, maybe if we're honest, we kind of admit that it kind of feels like it's too big of a responsibility, right? The world is a huge place. We're just one person. What can I actually do to make a change in the world? We don't even know where to start. And if we did, we're honestly a little too scared to try. Now, I want you to know that you're not alone in feeling scared, right? The whole idea of doing something to change the world is scary. It feels like this big, impossible thing that we there's no way we could do it and we're not capable of it. But because we think we don't know how to do it, or we don't feel like we know enough, or we're not sure where to start, or we think we've made too many mistakes to help anybody else, right? Or we think we're the only ones who care, or we don't know how to keep going once we get started. We're afraid we'll fail. But what if I told you that all this change the world stuff really is possible for you? In fact, it's something that can happen in big and small ways when we join the movement to follow Jesus. Because changing the world is something that he did thousands of years ago. And it's something he gives his followers a chance to do too. How do I know that? Well, because of something Jesus said during one of his final moments on earth. See, today we are going to look at the challenge Jesus gave his disciples. They were the ones closest to him. And he told them while he was on earth, these people did everything with Jesus. They witnessed him doing some of the most unbelievable life-changing things. Healing the sick, calming the sea, raising the dead, right? And if anything, you would think that they believed that Jesus could do anything. Well, remember, like us, they were human. And part of being human is experiencing the very real fear that you might not be able to do the most crazy, biggest, almost impossible thing you're asked to do. And so I have to imagine that Jesus, when he asked his disciples to literally go out and change the world, probably they were a little nervous, right? Could they really do that? Well, first let's look at what Jesus said to them. The Bible says, Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands that I've given you, and be sure of this. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. That's Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Now, that sounds like a big order. Basically, Jesus asked his followers to go out and do something humongous, to spread the movement to others, to go literally everywhere and teach people about him. I don't know about you, but that sounds impossible to me. There's a lot of people in the right? And it feels like too big of a movement to jump into and actually make an impact. I imagine the disciples probably felt the same way. At this time, they weren't even safe in their own country. Leaders in their nation were out to arrest or even kill them simply because they followed Jesus. So the idea of going into another part of the world and spreading the movement of Jesus had to have seemed crazy. And it definitely would have been scary. But Jesus still called them to do it. He gave them a big vision for the impact that they could have in bigger places. Uh, did he know that sometimes they would be scared? Yeah, of course he did. Did Jesus know that it would be really difficult for them sometimes? Sure, even more than they knew, right? But Jesus also knew that with him, the disciples could do it. His belief in them helped them believe too, both in themselves and in the moon. So Jesus is calling us to go, to serve, to speak up, to share his good news, to love other people, to be a part of his movement to change the world. And he's also telling us that sometimes that means doing the things we're afraid of. In other words, Jesus is saying, do something you're scared to do. The amazing changes that we wanna see in our world, we can be a part of making that happen. 
But in order to do that, we can't let fear hold us back. Think about the disciples. Were they scared? Yeah, probably. But we know they did it anyway. They took small steps that made big changes in their world. They kept the movement of Jesus growing and going so that we can still be part of it today. How were they able to do that? Well, look back at the last thing Jesus said. Be sure of this, Jesus said, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Matthew 28, verse 20. And Jesus promised to be with his disciples. Not sometimes, not just when it was easy, not just when they needed him, always. And it's the same promise he makes to you and me. As followers of Jesus, his very spirit lives inside of us. He goes with us wherever we go. He's closer than close, right? When we join the movement and we step out to do something that scares us, we can do it because we know we're not doing it alone. Imagine what could happen if we decided to just start. If we did the thing that we're scared to do, if we didn't let our fears and our anxiety stop us, the cool thing is the movement is already happening. That isn't new, right? And that means all we have to do is join in, jump in. And if we do, the possibility to impact and help other people is endless. So do something you're scared to do. And here's how you start. First, name what you're scared to do. I'm talking about the thing you might be afraid to do that has the potential to change the world around you for the better. Maybe for you, that looks like loving that person in your family who's so hard to love. Donating your allowance to a cause that's important to you. Choosing to say something when you see someone is being hurt or bullied. Whatever it is, name it. Next, ask God for the courage to do that thing. Ask God to help you do something you think you can't do for someone else. To make the impact you're not sure you can make. To actually do the thing you're scared to do. Pray that God will give you the words, the thoughts, the actions, and the courage to make it happen. Ask God to help you take that first step to join the movement. And finally, take the step. Do the next thing that moves you in the right direction. Sometimes it can feel overwhelming when you look at a whole movement. So instead, think about the next step. All these big movements were started with small steps, and yours can be too. Remember, you're not doing this alone. God promised the disciples that he would be with them, always. And he promises you the very same thing. His spirit lives inside you. He'll never leave you, and he's always there to help you. If he calls you to do something that you're scared to do, he will go with you 